Welcome back to our show. It's officially April, which means it's also officially the month that we see Taylor. Well, Yay. sorry, sorry, Sama. It's okay. <laughs> it's the month that Natasha and I see Taylor. I like, I I am honestly in all the feels. I it doesn't feel real, but also I feel so unprepared. Like I feel like I, how many times can I say I feel like in this opening? But everybody has been calling this the Met Gala for Swifties. And I, yes, 100%. Wow. Like, I don't think our population has ever come out so hard. Or maybe it's just mm -hmm. because, like, it's such a social media, like, forward tour mm -hmm. that yeah. we're seeing all the behind the scenes of everybody getting ready and everything. But I literally feel like I'm going to an award show. Mm -hmm. I have to have the perfect outfit. I'm like, everything that I continue to buy that I'm like okay I need to buy this for tour is glitter I'm like I need more glitter here I need more <laughs> hair glitter I need more face glitter like I love that's it. the theme this yeah year. the Met Gala theme this year is glitter actually I feel like in Taylor terms it would be shimmer, shimmer. yes <laughs> mm -hmm. so it's the it's the Taylor Swift shimmer tour but how are you feeling Tosh <laughs> like you're getting close too I'm so excited are you I also feel at all? unprepared, but I, yeah, and I, I, like, I also feel unprepared, but I also feel like me and you have been preparing for so long. Like, all we do is update each other on things that we buy. Like, you made your jacket forever, like, friendship bracelets. Like, all we've done is prepare, but it still doesn't feel like I'm ready, like, at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, but... <laughs> I agree. I feel like I've been preparing for so long. Like I, I've, I've had so much time to do things. Like I started making the friendship bracelets in January. I started my jacket in January, all of this stuff. I think I bought my dress before tickets even went on sale, but bought it very early. Yep. <laughs> so early. I think Taylor Swift was like, I'm going on tour. And I was like, cool, add to cart purchase. It will be here tomorrow. Um, <laughs> but now that it's like next week, I'm like, oh my God, I'm not prepared. Like I, everything that I thought I was ready with, I'm not. Mm -hmm. All right. So I think we should get started with our Taylor news today. Cause we have some fun stuff to talk about. What do you think? Absolutely. Let's do it. All right. Um, so before we say the actual news story, I want to preface this with the freaking merch issue that has been going on with the Eras tour. So for those of you who don't know, um, a lot of fans have been waiting for super long hours in the lines of the merch trucks. People have been camping. And I feel like one of our first episodes, we're like, Taylor fans don't camp. But honestly, like if we're being real... I know that there's other way to get merch, but if I was like, there's one specific thing that I want for merch, whatever, whatever, I'd camp for it. Like, I would not. You don't think so? You just hang out in your car and whatever. Dude, we freaking It's just camped. merch though, really. Natasha, we camped for tickets to Hunter Hayes. Yeah. That, that would... <laughs> that's but a that's good country experience. girl bumper sticker. That's camping. That's camping for an experience and for free tickets to a concert that's already convenient to go to like I would not camp to get a sweatshirt mm. like I'm sorry I wouldn't especially like if I can order one super similar that still says Eras tour on her website but it's not this it's a tour exclusive one even then you wouldn't do yeah it? but like no I wouldn't camp I would wait in like a line before I'm already gonna go to the concert but I wouldn't like spend the night I all. don't know spend the night but like if the line opens at like 10 a.m I'd get there at seven and just sit in a lawn chair and hang out no what about you Summer? Not for merch. I think I would if, if as long as it's not overnight if it's just a matter of getting there early I feel like we have to do that with the lines anyway so why not all right Sammy and I will camp Natasha I'll tell you, you what I anything. want no you I'll don't get you. You. <laughs> <laughs> the way it works off limits so basically they've been waiting forever for merch spending tons of money and then they get home from the concert throw their t-shirt in the wash and the merch is like completely destroyed like beyond <laughs> beyond faded it's like damaged at that point yeah like her face does not look like her face in some of the tiktoks we've seen some really bad stuff and like i have seen some good 
feedback from people saying that they reached out, they replied, like they sent emails to UMG and they're like, we're going to try and get you to, to get you a replacement, um, a replacement shirt or sweatshirt right away. And then I've also seen people who have been like, I tried to reach out and their mailbox is full now. So you can't even reach out anymore. Damn. Like, what would you do if you were in this situation? I've all, I also want to say, sorry, before you guys answer that, that I did see a TikTok of somebody who owns like a t-shirt press company. And she was like, if this is happening to your merch, get a piece of parchment paper and like turn your iron on low and just like iron over the design so that it finishes um, curing. So that's right. the problem with the merch that they've had that I guess the batches just went out before they were completely cured. And that's why they're like damaged. So she said you could try that. But what do you what do you guys think? I would still be upset. You know, you're paying so much for something that you're waiting in line for You're you know, waiting hours, you're spending a lot of money. It's not, you know, an average price for a t shirt. This mm -hmm. is expensive. Mm -hmm. So you don't deserve something that's unfinished. You shouldn't be finishing the work for them. Right. Just to prevent it from getting damaged. That's not fair. And it's understandable that they're you know, mailboxes are full with complaints and people, you know, wanting a refund or some solution to this, because at the end of the day, all your product that is released right now is in a way damaged or it's about to be damaged. So how do you, how do you resolve that? Because people are still buying it. You know, you can fix one person's issue, but you're still putting out damaged goods. So, yeah, you know, how did, how did that even happen from, from the beginning? Yeah. And like what I just don't know what it how they fix it moving forward. Obviously, they they fix the next batches that are going out. Right. But mm -hmm. we have I think it was like 80,000 people a night for three nights this weekend in Arlington. How do you fix all of that merch? Like these people can't even contact you anymore. Right. Because the only form yeah. of contact they have is via email. And like, there's just so much damaged merch out there. Like, what do we do now? If I was in that position, like I emailed and the merch box was full, like, so what now I get stuck with my crappy t-shirt. What's, right. right. what's the next step here? And it feels and like, they, a... I... go ahead, Tosh. No, go. No, I was just gonna say, it feels like a reoccurring conversation that we have with merch. What did we say before about, you know, being priced out of being a fan? We're spending so much money and people mm -hmm. kind of, you know, sometimes feel pressure with all these separate merch releases, you know, that go on with the seasons, that go on with the album drops. Here we have limited exclusive tour merch. You're only going to get it if you're there or if online, but, you know, it's it's nice if you get it when you're there at the show. Like only, again, for there to be some type of negative consequence of, of spending your money here. It just yeah, sucks. I think it's. I think it's unfair that like they know that it's Taylor Swift. They know that it's the era's tour. They know the demand. So they half assed the merch because they knew it would sell anyway. Right. And right. like, it's, it's, it's unfair that it's unfinished and we have to iron it or, you know, like the fact that we even have mm -hmm. to do anything to make sure that we can put it in the washer is like wrong. Yeah. Like, I, I don't think that's fair. And it also goes against the statement that Taylor Swift's team issued because, like, they sort of said that the slight, the, the fade is, like, because of a vintage look or, like, distressed look. So if, if it's because it was meant to look, you know, vintage and rustic, then why can you fix it when you iron it on correctly? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Right. And before, sort of before we go ahead and read, um, the statement that they issued on the site, which is what our first um, news story is and what's up Taylor Swift is today. I just want to say that, um, so we saw that at the opening weekend of Eras Tour in Glendale, the lines for merch were ridiculously long. People mm -hmm. were waiting hours. All the merch was sold out. So for Vegas, and they did it for Arlington, they will be doing it for Tampa as well. They've had these early merch days, right? But the, the problem that comes with the early merch days is now they're letting people who are not ticket holders have access to the merch, right? So mm -hmm. if the merch is open to the general public anyway, 
why are you not putting it on your website? Because it's no longer Eras Tour exclusive anymore. That's so true. It's like, it's no longer exclusive merch. Just put it on the mm-hmm. website and allow us to get it. I don't know why we haven't mm-hmm. reached that step yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because it, it stinks. I didn't it's even okay. think of that. Yeah, like when they have the the trucks there open to the general public. And the problem that comes with that too is that last weekend in Arlington, there were people, so the the hot like item right now, the hot ticket item to have right now from the Eras Tour exclusive merch is this navy crew neck that says mm-hmm. the Eras Tour and the dates on the back. It's just a pretty simple crew neck, comes in at $65, I think. But it is what everybody who goes to the merch truck wants. And last weekend in Arlington, there's videos all over TikTok of people going. They were camping for the merch, right? Not Taylor Swift fans going, buying box loads, box loads of these crew necks to put up on eBay and resell it for like three or four hundred dollars. Not fair. So it's like I... I, I constantly feel, and it's this is not against Taylor or her team, but yeah. like we continue getting robbed from from the experience mm-hmm. that we're supposed to have. Like we talked about this the other day that it's mm-hmm. like our Taylor Swift and, and Swifties and all of us, we used to be such a tight knit circle and like such a small community. Like it, it you used to be lame for being a Taylor Swift fan and the Eras tour, like Taylor Swift, and I'm so proud of her because She's our idol. We love her. We're so glad that she gets the attention that she deserves. But the mm-hmm. rest of the world coming into like our little world, it's literally destroying us. Mm-hmm. It is. Capitalism has, you know, really competed with us because people are people who have more resources are taking advantage and they mm-hmm. want to profit off something that other people just want to experience for the nostalgia, for the passion, for the the interest so we don't get the opportunity because we're always competing with people who unfortunately have bad intentions yeah it stinks and like I'm glad I'm glad that people were people were saying stuff to the people buying box loads they were Mm -hmm. like whatever but then after that after it like went crazy on the internet and blew up and went viral they actually went ahead and stopped that so they limited the merch right so you can only buy like two of each item and up to 10 items total which is amazing I love that and I'm glad that like social media did that for us that we kind of slowed that down so it's like okay you fix this but like and I know working in marketing and PR and like on the Ares tour I'm sure there's a million fires to put out each day but I would say that this merch issue is is a pretty big fire that needs to be put out and like this statement that they shared I don't necessarily think it's the answer yeah, it's not it. I'm going to go ahead and read the statement now so that our listeners can um, see what Taylor, Taylor Swift's team has responded about the merch issue. So due to the particular ink curing process used on certain tour collection products, after watching, after washing your merchandise, you may see a faint fade on the product print. This light fade is related to the product's distressed vintage look. Please also note it is important to follow product care instructions as listed on the product label when washing and drying your items to best protect and maintain the product's look and feel. No, no. The the first thing I have to say is so many people on the internet who have shared the videos of their merch being destroyed said, I looked at the tag and Mm -hmm. I followed the instructions. Right. Like the tag doesn't say do not wash, it will get destroyed. Like they're washing it based on what it says and it's still happening. Like I, the, I it's just a blatant lie. <laughs> it is also because you're not keeping the integrity of the design. You're trying to, they're trying to play it off that this was a distressed look from the moment of purchase. It's not. Right, right. It's not. It becomes distressed after a normal washing process. And right. if you're trying to sell it off the distressed look, that's what you're going to make it appear as when you go to purchase it. What if someone doesn't want that distressed look? They may be buying it yeah. because it's perfectly clear. We can see all versions of Taylor, her face, everything. It's in good condition. Not, I'm buying this because it's going to, you know, 
shift and she's going to shape shift. Yeah, she's going to just It's sport. like a scratch and sniff. It's actually yeah. called wash yeah. and fade. Wash, wash and, and fade. Yeah. Um, it's also yeah, funny right. because how many items of merch have we seen this design printed on? Like this poster haunts me in my sleep and you couldn't make a batch of t-shirts out of it also can i just say we i don't know if we all do but i think we all do still own like speak now merch red Mm -hmm. merch and i literally wore fearless tour merch fearless tour yeah and i wore my speak now shirt to sleep the other day and that baby is you can still see it it is not distressed and i've washed it a bajillion times like what are the odds that as she gets, you know, bigger and as people recognize, oh, the demand is higher, let's put less mm-hmm. effort into the stuff, you know, like, well, it's just- I do, I do want to say something about that, about that comment. Go. Yeah. Go when, on. when Taylor lost, also I'm wearing my rep merch and um, she looks exactly the same as the day <laughs> I bought her at rep tour um, five years ago. Okay. About that comment of why as she's gotten bigger her merch quality has declined when taylor left big machine records and went to umg part of her contract was the rights to her merch which is why all the past tours everything the merch was so perfection because taylor was a part of that process when she handed over the rights to the merch it's in umg's it's hands over. now yeah. yes they do the designs they have the handouts they make the products all of that and we've seen in the last years how much her merch has declined even and i'll say yeah. that when when she first signed with them the lover merch a lot of it amazing beautiful perfection and i think it's true as time has as she's gotten more famous the demand is higher they're they've kind of put us like on a, on the back shelf yeah but it's not it's not Taylor to blame. It's the fact that she lost yeah, it's, her rights right. when she moved to UMG. Yeah. So it sucks. I hate that. I hate that we lost that part because like we're so invested in all of that because we keep these things as like memories of of mm-hmm. that part in our life of tour of and of all of that. And now we've lost it. And like these valuables that we're supposed to have from the Eras tour are now just like they're not valuable anymore. Mm-mm. Yeah. It's just convincing me to get the tapestry more and more. <laughs> I am happy with my bejeweled bracelet. Thank you, Sama. And I will be wearing that to the Eras tour. Yay. Love. There is some stuff that's like the quality is amazing. I mean, my cardigan, I'm obsessed with it. Like, you know, it's yeah. just a hit or miss, but it's like, I feel like overall there's been a decline. Right. Yeah. Specifically I agree with, with that. Eras tour. Like, it's unfortunate that fans feel and, and have been getting gypped around every corner like first with tickets and then with other things going on so it, it kind of sucks that once once you get there once you get to the show you're also gonna have like something happen you know yeah and it's funny that locals are having like the best times of their lives right like they're the ones that only know taylor's greatest hits but they have their crew neck they have the vip package yeah. they have front row diamond like they have everything that we all <laughs> all we ever wanted like all we've ever worked for literally Mm -hmm. so it's just sad it's I like I'm a little sad I'm not super sad but sometimes I'm a little sad to be a Taylor fan like because it's like man I knew Taylor when she was Taylor and now she's Taylor Swift it's changed it's changed so much this is literally the great war that we've we've gone through and it's not over yeah And like I said, like, I'm happy that she's getting like the platform that she deserves. But again, where were all of these people in 2016? Because Mm -hmm. I guarantee you that half of them were tweeting snake emojis and hashtag Taylor Swift is over. For sure. For sure. (laughs) Taylor Swift is over party. Oh, my God. (laughs) I can't believe that. And like, have any of these people even watched Miss Americana? Like, do they know the damage that they did to her? Did you guys see the guy at the Eras tour last weekend? There were two guys that wore these terrible t-shirts. The the Kanye one? One was Kanye. It said, I made that bitch famous on the back. And another oh one God. was Taylor Swift, the Errors tour. And it had <gasps> the dates of all her ex-boyfriends. 
Yeah. What are you doing there? How did you get tickets to that? Yeah. And like, first of all, you, if you hate Taylor Swift and you're wearing that merch, you literally are giving her money for going to her show. Second of all, like leave. Nobody wants you there. If you're wearing that, it's not funny and it's not cute. That's were insane. those two guys together? Because I only I don't, saw the. No, I don't think so. It, they might have even no, been like in the dates. not in the same video. No, I they only were. saw the. Okay, okay. That's crazy. Like night, like that's multiple people, you know, that are thinking yeah. of that and, and doing. I mean, it. when you're thinking of eighty thousand fans per night per weekend, mm-hmm. oh, it's so frustrating and like that's annoying. As yeah. as the person who's traveling with that person, like you really gave your ticket to somebody and then mm-hmm. let them wear that shirt to the concert. Like mm-hmm. you yeah. thought it was a good idea. This is not the space for you. They also literally had to sit through three hours of Taylor. So like, I, I don't get it. What was the point of that? For clout, I guess. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, the videos exploded and went viral, which is annoying. Oh, my they God, did that just... for that reason like they knew that Swifties would post and be like oh my god like mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. it, it's just annoying like yeah. the intention behind it mm-hmm. especially that it's men doing that to women to rile them up but that's a topic for another day so yeah that's in sad. better news one of our followers um, shared an exciting story about how Taylor made a generous donation to the Tarrant area food bank before her shows in Arlington last weekend. Ooh. And with this donation, she ensured that thousands of North Texans in the Tarrant area will be able to feed their families this week. So um, this is something that's been going on like throughout the stops of the Eros tour. Like I've, I heard that she did it in Glendale. I heard that she did it in Vegas. But um, I'm just really, I really wanted to share because our follower, Lisa, shared the story with us. And um, she was actually working, like she works with the Tarrant Area Food Bank. So she was keeping us updated throughout the week, just like sharing little tidbits of information here and there. And I just really wanted to give her a shout out and share this story. Um, And they were actually calling the food bank during the week that Taylor was there and leading up to her shows, the Taylor area food bank instead of the Tarrant area food bank. So I thought that was really cute and fun. And like, Taylor is such a queen for doing stuff like that. Like, thanks, Taylor. We love her for that. Um, That's awesome. And for more information about this specific food bank or to make your own donation, check out TF, T, excuse me, TAFB dot org. So TA, like Tarrant Area, FB, foodbank.org, and you can make a donation easily on their site, learn more about the food bank, see their pics and stuff. So I just wanted to share that. It was super exciting. Um, And our last big story in What's Up, Taylor Swift. Have you guys seen this? I'm so excited to talk about it. Oh, my God. (laughs) The whole theory about Taylor Swift arriving to stage every night in a mop car and how it was officially confirmed. I love it. So it's so funny. It's yeah, hilarious. It and I was talking about it with Adrian the other day because I'm like, I see the big picture that's going around is the mob cart on the ramp and like the two guys mm-hmm. pushing it. Pushing it. And like I know what it is. Like before the theory's confirmed, I'm like, okay, obviously Taylor's in there. So I, I show the phone to him. I'm like, Taylor Swift is in here. And he's like, No, she's not. And I was like, in 2016, she was yes. photographed leaving her apartment inside a luggage. She is in that mop cart. I'm glad you brought it up. (laughs) Because nobody physically saw her for a year. That's what she says in uh, Miss Americana. But I'm like, she's literally in there. And then when she shared her TikTok of like the trend that everybody's doing of um, Era's tour, that it's Miss Americana time. So it goes like a mashup. And it's Mm -hmm. just like, it goes into the pics. And then it's like a bunch of pictures and video of the Era's tour. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of the pictures that she shared is her in the lover outfit. And you can kind of tell that the mop cart is behind her. <laughs> like when you look at the. Oh, picture, I need to look at that again. Yeah, I'll share it. I'll share it on our Instagram so you guys can see too. Um, but it, like you can kind of see that she's coming out of the mop cart. Okay, so it's her leaving. Like you can kind of tell that it's the mop cart. It's like not super obvious because obviously I don't think she wanted people to know that she's in the mop cart. But. Mm-hmm. Of course, since some of our um, lucky fans, I am so sorry, honestly, for anybody who has the literal backstage view of the Eras tour. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) 
since they can see everything back there, yeah. somebody caught on video Taylor coming out of the mop cart. So it's like I confirmed. love it. I love and it's it. obvious that it's not a real one because it like isn't in the middle. Like it's only on the border of the mm -hmm. actual cart. So it's yeah. just and like those people are literally like putting Too, in yeah. work pushing up a mop cart. And it looks like, like a prop. <laughs> it's yeah, like, it, like it's... handles or anything on the side. <laughs> How do you guys think that she is inside the mop cart? Do you think that there's a little seat? Do you think she's holding on to like a bar on the sides? What do you think? I'm curious. I think she's just popping a squat in there. You think so? Yeah. For I don't that think there's long, a seat. I feel like that has to be like, I mean, it's probably like a two minute squat. I yeah, in heels, there's probably though. just like bars to hold she's on just, to. I think she's just, just down. Hold on to <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I could see there, like it's Taylor Swift, guys. I could see them, though, also making her a seat if that's what she wanted. <sighs> yeah, there's enough room. Like if she's like, make me a seat right now. They're like, okay, Taylor. She already yeah. went to the trouble to be like, make me a mop cart that's fake <laughs> so that I can be in there. <laughs> But I, I probably agree to you that she's just squatting for a minute or two, holding on to that. And Hopefully we'll see in, in that. the documentary. True. Yes, uh, they did have like, some people have been sharing pics and videos of like Taylor being followed around. I think it was just opening yeah. weekend with cameras and stuff. So that'll be fun to see. So I told Adrian. Yeah, oh, hopefully closing weekend too. I think they did closing for for rep tour and also speak now i think was like the closing show so maybe it'll be opening and closing weekend um wait did they see the camp like cameras and all that the first show like opening night or just the opening weekend i can't remember i honestly don't remember okay. but i know that i did see a picture of a sign from opening night that said like you're being filmed like people in the crowd okay. you have you consent to being filmed whatever mm -hmm. So I'm just asking because if it'll be like closing night versus closing weekend potentially. Oh, since we're there yeah. on Tuesday. Yeah. But I feel like since it's the same location, like you could play off like using clips from either. Like I know it's it's different night, but yeah, I mean yeah. they might have to get enough footage that they do film both. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Depends. Yeah. Oh my god, maybe. maybe that would be like my dream come true i'm always so me? jealous mm. for me i am so <laughs> jealous of all of the people who end up in like the tour movies yeah. and stuff they're like taylor i'm like i wish that was me i'm sorry mm -hmm. that would be like Just i'm gonna watch so that sad. with like a magnifying glass <laughs> where oh. is your magnifying glass <laughs> on my forehead <laughs> Well, we'll know like if we're being filmed or not. Like if we're not being yeah. filmed, there's no reason to watch it like super, you know. Yeah. But if there are yeah. cameras around, like I'm gonna be like, oh, Taylor, <laughs> it's me. I'm such Hi. a big fan. <laughs> <laughs> me putting like visine drops in my eyes, like as now if we're I'm gonna not gonna be, cry. Yeah. I was gonna say we're gonna be crying naturally. <laughs> yeah. I was watching a little bit of the live stream this weekend. I've become a semi live streamer. I'm only watching. I'm only watching surprise songs because I know they're not going to be played again. Yeah, I, I blow up the, everybody's <laughs> phones with surprise songs, but I only like I've timed them to know when it's coming on. Yeah. So I know when to watch. And that's the only thing I watch because it's just either her on the guitar and her or her yeah. on the piano. But no, I feel that I do the same. I try to avoid the transitions between eras just so I can have that, you know, live with the right. surprise songs I vibe with. I'm good. The only era that I've actually like seen, I would say a full performance of is fearless. I saw her mm. full performance of fearless, like the song. Oh, um, man. Yeah. Adrian oh, was watching the, the live the other day he was live streaming and I was literally just in my room sitting on the bed singing to all the songs <laughs> <laughs> I was like it's singing okay. cry just like, like <laughs> yeah. listening that's how loud it was oh my god yeah but I have like I'm still glad that I haven't seen anything I think after Tampa I'm just gonna go yeah. full live stream that's it oh I mean, you, you might as well. though yeah every weekend I'll be there like 
all right it's it's live stream <laughs> o'clock you're like oh i remember that part oh what Aww. comes next is this <laughs> i was playing I, the music with rj and he and surprised me he said what if this is your surprise song and puts on teardrops on my guitar and i was like okay ooh. i'm proud of you for that one that would be a really good one. I'm kind of like looking. gave a good suggestion. Yes, I'm hoping for that. Actually, I wanted to do it. We can do it on today's show. There's like a thing going around where you shuffle your Spotify Taylor twice to get your like uh -huh. two surprise songs so we can see like, yeah, so Ooh, we can make our surprise okay. song guesses. I definitely want to do that. Um, but I did want to say I was so proud of myself watching the Fearless performance because I knew the hard hands were coming like before they came. Mm. I looked over to Adrian and I was like, it's about to happen. I just threw my hard hands oh. up and she threw hers up and I literally, I just lost it. I completely, I started oh sobbing God. so much. I was like, oh, <laughs> you just don't understand. I was like, <laughs> I was like Swifties who became Swifties later in life, like during folklore, Evermore era, they'll never understand what it's like to have grown up with Taylor. Like, the parallels of our lives and her music and all of that. Yes. Like, that is the biggest thing. And that's what I think makes me so emotional about this tour is that mm. those songs like quite literally make me relive mm. like being in sixth grade and listening to right. that song for the first time. And like, oh, it gives me chills. I think that's why we get so emotional with those albums. You know, we have this special connection with it and it brings this nostalgia that you know, it's not like listening to it for, you know, the first time, like with Evermore, Folkmore, where we're older, you know, mm -hmm. we have a different perspective when it comes to music. Like we literally grew up and grew with her. We went through the different phases with her. So I literally cry just thinking about those songs. <laughs> no, same, same. That's what I think. And that was the first concert you went to. So like, it's going to mean so much to you. Like, yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's a lot. It's a, seriously a lot of emotions that I wasn't even expecting to have. And like, mm -hmm. I've seen performances of other sh like shows or like little clips or whatever. And I don't, I still have not felt the way that I, I feel every time Taylor Swim Taylor sings Fearless. And like, I think I've come to realize that that is like my most like emotional Taylor Swift song just on a different level. Um, And like personal as a fan, like that's really, you know, it was the mm -hmm. opening of that record. It's just a lot. It's a lot of things. Um, but like I see rep and I'm like not emotional about it. I see 1989 mm -hmm. and I'm not. It's just like really those those younger ones. Like I think if she plays mm -hmm. a debut song as the surprise song, I'll probably be emotional about it. For sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel I the same way. Even though I love rap and it's one of my favorites, it won't make me feel the same as me mm -hmm. listening to Long Live where I'm sobbing. Or yeah. me yeah. getting like that, you know, that feeling when I listen to Fearless, that it's like almost like on the top of the world type of feeling. I don't know the word for it, but. I get you. I get you. It's yeah. it's what we're going to feel when we're on top of the world flying from Miami to L.A. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> exactly right. My <laughs> flight attendant's going to come serve me a drink and I'm just going to have my heart <laughs> I'm good thanks. the whole time on the flight. <laughs> um, yeah, so there it was just a lot. But speaking of the shows, did you guys see Selena and Gracie like <gasps> all of the content on Saturday yes. night? Was that not so freaking wholesome and perfect? That was so pure. Love I loved it. that. Her little sister is so cute going full speak now with like the curls and everything. Her hair was perfect it was I, on point and her dress yeah she was just amazing and did you see when taylor gave her the 22 hat that she gives yes. taylor a friendship bracelet the bracelet it was a little exchange love it it was does so anyone cute. know what the bracelet was i want to know so bad <laughs> it looked blue okay from what i saw i don't know the clips of the video like are I, honestly so bad yeah like, I just wonder if it was a special one she made, like, you know, in case I could give it to her or it was like a, a you know, oh, my God, I'm right in front of her. Let me give her one of my bracelets. Like, I just need more. <laughs> I think it was that. I think, like, it looks like they had okay. had a bunch of bracelets and then she was like, oh, my God, like, 
Taylor Swift is giving me the hat. I need to give her something. Let me give her one of my bracelets kind of thing. Right. Okay. Yeah. But it was so cute. And I love that like Selena like went out of her way to arrange that moment for Gracie so that like she could be the one to get the hat. Mm -hmm. And she looks so good. I love her in her cardigan fit. Yes, with her little space buns. I love that for her. She was she really was giving folklore. Um, Mm -hmm. But talking about Saturday at Arlington, is anybody safe? Are you marked safe? from the surprise songs in Saturday, like on Saturday at Arlington. Did anybody watch That's... it live? No. Um, did I watch it live? No, I don't think so. My God, guys, I send the live links for a reason. I yeah, I don't, I didn't watch it live. I saw it. That was the only after. one I didn't see live. Surprise me. I was so mad. I was in the shower and I was like, okay. Um, It's surprise song o'clock. Like I got to log on right now. (laughs) So I log on and she's like, Jack Antonoff. And I'm like, oh God, what could it be? And she's like, this is a song called Death by a Thousand Cuts. And I just started screaming bloody murder. And then I'm like singing, whatever. And then she messes up the bridge three times. Mm -hmm. And I thought I messed up. I was like, how could I mess up one of my favorite Taylor Swift songs ever? What's going on? And then she's like, (laughs) When I finally rewatched the actual clips on TikTok, like she's laughing and everything like, ha It's so cute. Yeah. Do you guys think that she messed up on purpose because she knew that she wanted to play Death by a Thousand Cuts like at a later date because she knew it was going to be such a big song. So she messed up so she could play again. Or do you think she actually just messed up? I would, I would think she could mess up like with all the, yeah the new songs like for, for each show I I wouldn't put it past her. like it happens you know yeah yeah I also think that like like the way she even switched up the set list switching out invisible string for the yeah. one I forgot like to talk she about could, that yeah <laughs> yeah like she could very well repeat a surprise song because like she knows it's a big song that, that everybody loves so I feel like you know like she didn't need the excuse of messing up to to re redo it at mm-hmm. another show okay considering she even switched up the set list right I'll because she off. just wanted to yeah fair fair like I, I think it was genuine and for our Swifties who are not up to date with um the set list on every show I think I updated our um actual like what's it called our Spotify set set list playlist to include the one and um <laughs> invisible string back to back just in click in case she plays either or but now True. I'm so nervous like so I started thinking today I was like okay so she played the original set list that we know and love the first two opening cities um Glendale and Vegas then she switches it for Arlington all weekend all three shows so mm-hmm. I'm like okay maybe she'll switch the one to Arlington and Texas right so now in te- Texas listen to me Tampa so now Mm -hmm. in Tampa we get the one and then the next set of two cities she switches another song on the set list but from a different era Mm. okay and does it like two 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 right but two 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 yeah like changing the era that gets changing the era yeah so it's not she was like we can be tricky whatever like you're never gonna know for sure I yeah I feel like it's definitely like that was not the only time this whole switch up was gonna is gonna happen like it's yeah. definitely gonna continue to happen and it makes sense that it would continue to happen not just with folklore you know right That's, so I wonder like she, crazy it's scary yeah. it's scary to think yeah. of. you don't know what you're gonna get and then like what happens so like here's the thought that I have if she switches the set list right so like she switched the one for invisible string does that mean that invisible string becomes a surprise song now like acoustic or piano if it's not in it's no mm-hmm. longer on the set list like how does that work yeah, valid question mm. i like, i feel like i feel like yes no. but no yeah, yeah i don't like i, don't I feel know. like it could make sense though because it's not on the set list like you're not gonna but- hear it but then it's not a surprise, like, like it, it's already been on the set list. 
So like, it wouldn't be a surprise to hear it because you could have just switched it. I, I, I don't know how to explain it. Cause, but then my, my like rebuttal to that is that you now take it off the surprise like you now take the one off the surprise song like if you're gonna mm -hmm. remove if you're gonna switch invisible mm -hmm. string and the one and invisible string doesn't become a surprise song then the one can't become a surprise song either yeah you're right i think none of them if they're like permanently or have ever been permanently on the set list i feel like they're not going to be a surprise song mm -hmm. because I, you I, maybe I... wouldn't be surprised to have heard it because it was originally on the set list anyway but it won't so, be, it'll be like in the surprise song era, kind of like. But but you don't know, like, you don't know if she's consistently going to keep substituting right. the one for Invisible String. She probably has like two different pools of songs. This pool is for surprise songs. This pool is for switching main set list songs. Mm -hmm. So it can rotate like within each pool, but there's not going to be A overlap. Crossover maybe you so know our, so one. our surprise song pool is actually shorter or smaller than we think yes okay, yeah I think like so. i would think yeah i would think the one and invisible strings don't count in surprise song pools okay fair fair before we end today's episode we have to do our surprise song picks we'll do it we'll okay. do it at the end we'll do it at the end um yeah. so next thing that I want to talk about have you guys seen all of this stuff with nice boy ed like what's been going on Yeah It's like so I cryptic. actually just reheard yeah and I just re-listened to the two songs that were released cuz I was like I just need more let me see if the lyrics give anything <laughs> <laughs> Wait so it was two songs that were released now No 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 he, in there are two songs yeah there are just just two under his name ever. Yeah Yeah but I just and, wanted to know if anything was going to give <laughs> anything. And for those of you who don't know, Nice Boy Ed, is it like, it's not confirmed, right? He's, he, it's just, he's supposed to be, or we believe him to be Joe Alwyn, like Joe his, Alwyn. his musical performance name. Unconfirmed yeah. yet. But... Yes. Unconfirmed Nice yeah. Boy Ed. So there's another theory that it could be Joe Alwyn's friend who's named Ed. Oh, but do you I think saw that maybe, too. maybe he, he named himself Nice Boy Ed yeah. so that people would think that it was his friend Ed and not it, actually him? Exactly. Yeah, That's you. exactly what I thought. I was like, well, it could be just a name that he got from someone close to him. And then the friend, like yeah. that could be the source. Yeah. So this yeah. is wild. And I actually want to thank one of our followers, Brittany, for bringing it to my attention. She sent us a DM and she's like, have you been keeping up with this, all this mm -hmm. nice boy Ed stuff? And I was like, girl, what? Please tell me, enlighten me. Mm -hmm. So basically he posted this like bluish purple screen. It's kind of like periwinkle sort of color. I don't mm -hmm. know. It's I, For me, it's giving 1989, but I feel like it could also give speak now, depending on speak what. Speak now, yeah. It depends on what angle in the light I think you look at the, mm -hmm. the blue. So yeah. um, he posted this like literal just blank image on his stories of the um, of the color. And then if you're on the email list, there were three different types of emails that were sent out. So um, each one was of a Polaroid that said something. So one said, sunlight stays so late in June by nice boy Ed. And then in parentheses, it says three out of 10. Then the next one said, what if we will become everything we said we would by nice boy Ed parentheses five out of 10. And the third said shimmering and skin tight parentheses six out of 10. So it's just, it's a little even more cryptic because we know album number three out of 10 is speak now five mm -hmm. out of 10 is 1989 and six out of 10 is rep. And those are all re-recordings that have not been released yet. And then to add the cherry on top yesterday, Taylor nation tweeted and put on Instagram, a picture of Taylor in her lover costume, like from opening night um, for tour. And it said, we couldn't just pick one. So we're sharing all four, but there was literally only one costume that they shared. It was just that one picture. Like they said, we couldn't pick one. So we yeah. shared all four and it's literally one. And then Taylor had a post in it that had four T's at the end of that. So people are thinking like this nice boy, Ed and the Taylor nation and Taylor Swift 
everything kind of meets in the middle that it might be they couldn't pick one re-record so they're re-releasing all four at the same time it's a mm. little far-fetched but i think it it definitely <sighs> deserves like a seat at the table to be talked about and i also want to sure. point out that on the nice boy ed website it was literally just like covered in blank polaroids and supposedly there was like one specific polaroid that if you clicked on it it had the link to the nice boy ed discord chat hmm polaroids are giving 1989 they are and that's why i said that blue is giving 1989 yeah, but I then like the the four albums at once thing. I just think is a little bit far fetched because Too like much. I think it's just so yeah. much, especially knowing yeah. how we received Fearless and Red. Like it right. was literally like their own album drop, as right. it should like be. They, you know. Yeah, and then that would also kind of like okay. So then what's that 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 hue color that was posted? Unless there's going to be three others. And then it'll be four just like different colors posted by Nice Boy Ed, like on, on Twitter is where I saw it. But like, just one is weird again. I don't know. I don't know. I signed up for the email list to see it, but I haven't received any emails. So it's, it's weird. It's so cryptic. It's too cryptic. Oh, yeah. I don't like that it. That pic though of the kid with the ice cream, like I did a side by side with like a pick now of of joe and i'm like that that's that's him that's him like you could see it in the ear shape i literally zoomed in it's his eyebrow shape the way he has eye creases everything i just think that definitely this three out of ten five out of ten six out of ten like if this if nice boy ed is joe which i think it is right. These three out of ten, five out of ten, and six out of ten has to do something with the re-records because there are ten albums. Yeah, yeah that's too obvious. Like yeah. it's not a date; it's something out of ten. So I was thinking that maybe these like lyrics are. Oh no, because it says by Nice Boy Ed. I was like maybe thinking that these lyrics are like vault tracks from each album. But like, I'm well, looking what at if it's like William Bowery songs? maybe i don't know like the 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 vault track is like a taylor swift and william bowery track yeah it's a it's a stretch but what i interpreted as when i read like each line is like the connection it has to speak now 199 mm -hmm. and rap so like okay the second one what if we'll become everything we said we would like just think keyword would uh, I wish you would. 1999. Yes. Make that connection. Okay, mm -hmm. the next one. Mm -hmm. Shimmering and skin tight. I didn't look into too much, but skin tight, dress, wrap. Dress. I was dress. thinking yeah. shimmering was New Year's Day. True. With wrap. And what then about the first one? Sunlight stays so sunlight. in June. There's like, I think they're either mine. I think there, there might be something about sunlight in mine. Um, when they're like sitting out by the water, um, you know the you know the the lyrics to the song yeah. mine, um, yeah, something there. I was trying to figure out like if it was late in July, that would have been because last kiss July 9th is like the last kiss date. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, but it's June, so I'm like, damn it. But maybe I'm like, okay speak now summer july you know i don't know it's hard also on his tiktok the the post of that picture of the the pinkish periwinkle hue mm -hmm. there's it's like a obviously it's like a tiktok video it's not like a swipe with a picture right and it's just like silent like no audio no nothing and like people were commenting on it, like I've never heard silence quite this loud. Mm, just yeah, I saw oh. that. like lyrics like that. And now I'm just thinking, I want to, I want to see how long that second, how, how long that video is, like how many seconds it is, because it might be three or five or six. So like I want to kind of check that. Like yeah, even across. Interesting. 
we'll have to like stay on top of that and update you guys on our socials as we um as we like find out more but i'm hoping it is like cryptic clues to re-records because you guys know that I'm on the speak now re-record train. I think at this point I'm like the captain of the like two two all aboard everybody. Let's go. Speak now's coming. <laughs> That's my move until further notice. So okay, and then before we wrap up today's episode and pick our surprise songs in the surprise song shuffle. Uh, we have two quick Dear Reader questions today. So an anonymous follower said, this isn't really a question, but more like an opinion. Realistically, how many bracelets would be too many? I wanted to make 100, but I don't know if I'll be able to trade all of them. I think it it just depends like how many you're comfortable with. I know what I've seen a lot of people doing, like let's say I'm, I take like hypothetically 30 to the Tampa mm -hmm. show and I only trade 20. If I went through the trouble of making those additional 10 bracelets and I'm not going to a follow-up show where I know that I can trade those extra bracelets, just hand them out to people. A lot of people yeah. have been saying like, oh, uh, so-and-so was giving away free bracelets or, oh my God, I received this bracelet from a fan. I think it's still something that's like chair like you know it's like a memory no matter what you're gonna make mm -hmm. an impact on somebody's day if they weren't expecting a friendship bracelet and they didn't bring anything yeah to and they received one from you so I think it's just on, on what you're comfortable taking and like making for sure I agree I don't think like we have to have not that like this at like asker does on the dear reader but like we don't have to have the mentality where we have to trade like you can just take a lot and like not leave with the same amount and that's okay too so like yeah. if you're making a hundred and like they kind of fit on your wrist and you're gonna get there early like I probably wouldn't suggest walking into the show with a hundred right. but like if you're gonna get there early and hang like outside and chat and meet people like you can definitely get rid of 100 bracelets you know and yeah. still obviously trade some so absolutely yeah, I think it's just up to the person and if like you want to it to be a real trade then yeah 100 is probably a lot because you're not going to want to wear 100 at the show right and also a lot of people um so I've been seeing it for every venue we'll see how it works with Tampa since our bags are literally the size of one of my eyeballs um, but you can actually put your bracelets in the clear bag. Like as long as they're in the bag that you carry with you into the stadium, you can toss them all in there. So that's just something good to know. And I also, now that we're talking about bracelets, I completely forgot. And I wanted to share before we close out for the day, but Taylor nation has been retweeting people saying like, Oh, I'm sitting in section X, Y, Z, and I have bracelets to trade. Come trade with me. They're oh. literally retweeting it and encouraging friendship bracelet trading. And I love, I love so much like I think my eyes got watery and I'm totally manifesting like a oh my god I'm sitting in section for all mm -hmm. of my Tampa Swifties I am sitting in section 206 please come find me I have bracelets to trade and I want to see you please I'm like gonna be embarrassed probably <laughs> so if you know where I'm sitting and you have no pena come up to me and we'll <laughs> trade bracelets so yeah I might be walking around just like with my wrists up to show people like I have bracelets with the heart with the heart though the oh heart yeah happens. Yes. Just walk around like this. Please trade. Please trade. I'm gonna add please trade to the back of my Ares tour jacket. Yes. You have to. <laughs> Even the Tampa Bay Times is aware of like the Swifty bracelet trading because they put it in their their like article about the Taylor Swift show coming up. And they're like, right. there's plans to trade bracelets. You could do it outside, bring your bracelets, do it here, go early. Like I thought it was so cute that they're like on top of that stuff. How Even giving it that. a super cute. I love that. And I'm so excited that it's like something that's actually been successful this tour that yeah. everybody's like su super excited about it. And like, it's something that works. It's, I think it's really memorable. Yeah. I, I was scared it was going to flop a little, like, just because like, what are the odds that people actually do it? But I'm just, it's, it's really so cute. It's like the cutest. Yeah. Like, My mom. You get to keep them. You keep the things. It's like yeah. merch. Yes, and I actually <laughs> want to shout out um Alexis on Twitter. She's um at I think those 89 curls. She's the 1989 Twitter and Swift Talk Swifty. And she said that she found this idea from somebody else, but I I saw it through her. She bought this plastic birdhouse at Target. Completely I think it's like in Bullseye's playground right now. 
and she printed out a picture of the lover house and put it inside the clear plastic birdhouse and then it has like a little like mm. just like a little rectangle right in front of it and stored all her bracelets there it is so oh. cute so cute and that's like I such feel- a what was it a birdhouse like 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 a cube or like kind of like a flat rectangle it looks like it it looks like a house and then it has like a part that outstretches so that it has like a bottom you get me like a place to store things but then the back of it is like a flat house shape okay that's really cute I just, I don't know how long ago I saw, I saw a a TikTok of someone making the lover house from the Target house. And I went to, this was like a month ago and I went to Target to try to find it and they didn't have it. But in the video I saw, it wasn't to store bracelets. They just like recreated the lover house and that's it. So that's why I'm like, what house was it where you could store? Yeah, it's it's like a clear plastic house. It looks like, honestly, like it was like from the spring collection of Bullseye's Playground. I'm going to yeah. Target soon, so I'll go ahead and um, check that out. Yeah. And then yeah. our last dear reader, before we do, I'm going to keep saying it until we do it so we don't forget, our surprise <laughs> song shuffle. And also, I want to mention just a little quick thing about the upcoming show dates is from Mia, my sister, who has also requested that she comes on our show after our Tampa mm-hmm. show so that we can talk yes! about all things Tampa. Love she's it. super excited for that so we'll ha- we'll have her on soon to talk about all things tampa but she wants Yay. to know what we think if haunted will be like as a rock version on speak now tv mm. and like just remember that when they say like rock version like they call the don't blame me version from tour rock version right. mm-hmm. so just think of that in that concept i'm not going to tell you guys what i answered her because we have this conversation on the side but I did promise her that I would ask you guys to share your opinions on the pod. I think like, would it be replacing? Yes, the haunted original. Haunted Taylor's version? Okay. Mm-hmm. See, I don't think that that would happen. Okay. Sama? I, yeah. <laughs> well, we'll talk about it after. That's why. If it's strictly replacing, like getting rid of, OG mm-hmm. like I I don't I don't think so okay I also I feel said like it's no. iconic and it's I also said no because own. in the other re-records that we have we don't have alternate versions of the songs the songs are yeah really yeah the way that like they've they've been played but I told her I think my theory is maybe it'll be an alternate version as a vault track or like a right. song true we know Taylor does not shy away from having a million remixes, so that is definitely yeah. on the table. <laughs> Samantha is the remix coordinator for Taylor Swift. <laughs> Another anti-hero one on the way. Too bad that the Lavender Haze, the Lavender Haze acoustic version, honestly, she's the moment. I love her. My favorite is still the <laughs> Bleachers remix. I, I go so hard. <laughs> but I agree yeah I think that the rock version it's like I think it could be on the album but I don't think it would be on it to replace the OG yeah yeah okay never forget OG um sorry no uh, live haunted performance so I think the live performance from speak now world tour is considered like a rock performance okay good to know yeah so that's why I was like maybe um, yeah it would come up as like a, a alternate whatever All, yeah. vault so I like that I guess yeah. that's the same thinking of like do we think don't blame me was it it's mm. don't blame me right that she does rock version mm-hmm. <laughs> like maybe I just like I don't know I, I, I still don't see it happening but like it could it's the same sort of thinking you know yeah, mm-hmm. like if it was going to happen, it's going to happen that way. I don't necessarily think that it's going to happen, but if it were to happen, it would be an additional song not replacing the original. Right. Because she was like, listen to Girl at Home, Taylor's version, and Girl at Home, regular, and they do sound different. But mm-hmm. my rebuttal to that was that Girl at Home is a deluxe song. Right. Yeah. So like it didn't matter whether or not she changed that version because a lot of people had never even heard it anyway. Right. Yeah, it's it would feel too extreme. It was so if it was something like haunted, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's an album song, so I just I really don't think so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. 
And with that being said, I just wanted to share, um, remember guys to check out our social media because yesterday our post for all the April shows with reminders and things to know slash know before you go about your stadium for this month went out. So if you are attending a Taylor show in the month of April, that is Raymond James Stadium, NRG Stadium in Houston and Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta. The most up-to-date information that we have about your venue, including parking, merch bus, lot times, all of that stuff is going to be in our pinned post on our page. And it went out yesterday. So just keep an eye out for that if you're going to be attending any April show. And then last but not least, it's <laughs> time for our surprise song shuffle. Okay. All right. Sammy pulled our first two surprise songs for oh Thursday God. night in Tampa. Share them. I got Sweet Nothing first. Oh my God, I will die for that song. Okay. Right? Oh, and just then... kidding. I, th I thought you were saying Sweeter Than Fiction, but also I will die for that song. So yes. Yeah, I, yeah, I was going to, I wouldn't die for it, but it's all right. I, I think it's a really, really pretty song. It's nice. I like it. Okay, next. And then I got This Love. Ooh, that's oh, a very you got, That's a good one. combo. That's what thing. I was thinking. At first I was like, uh, but I was like okay they kind of fit together it is because when she did Cowboy Like Me with Marcus Mumford she did White Horse after White Horse. yes okay same vibe that's a good combo like I feel like that's actually very doable like I'll realistic. bet on it <laughs> nice she rolled the dice all right Friday <laughs> is Natasha go my first one on my shuffle was New Romantics Ooh. Ooh. That would be a good one. Oh my that god! And then the bop. second, that would be a bop. And then the second was red. Mm -hmm. Oh man, red, eh, 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 Tasha, eh, I don't know if you remember this. In high school, we made a music video to red, like super random, <laughs> but like in the classroom one day. It was, I think, it was during like our free period. I, <laughs> I don't remember. It's lost in someone's old phone. It's but in the yeah. archives with the, uh, the Forever and Always music <laughs> video that we made. That that in my backyard. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. No, I don't remember that. I, damn, I wish I could see that footage, though. Yep, it's gone. <laughs> I feel right. like New Romantics and Red is, an, is a good combo, too. It's pretty yeah. upbeat. Um, actually, like, same vibes. Now that you brought up those two songs, I do have a question about what we think about surprise songs because we have such a vast like array of options for surprise songs but do we like do we think that she can play like super poppy songs i was hoping you would bring this up because i've been seeing people saying that they really want getaway car but i i really I, can't oh my God. see it as a surprise song you are reading my mind because that's exactly what i was gonna say rj was like oh i hope you get getaway car and i was like that that's not gonna work like I can picture it on guitar though like getaway car acoustic like you were we were yeah and like I, I can hear it already <laughs> thank you for not gracing us with that <laughs> you were I were we were <laughs> what about piano I feel like that'd be that that would just take away the hype from getaway car though it need it needs the hype it <laughs> you want to try that again Tosh <laughs> I think New Romantics could be uh, guitar, acoustic, right? Yeah. I don't know. I'm just like, I'm really trying to think how she would play the really poppy songs on acoustic or piano. Like, do we think that that I, takes I could... them out of the running completely? Or we can just assume that they can be played guitar or piano? I think for the sake of our, our surprise shuffle... <laughs> We'll, we can keep it in the running, but I don't know what the likelihood is. But, okay, in Miss Americana, they're creating Getaway Car. I can't remember if they created it acoustic or piano. It might actually have been piano. There's clips of her creating it with Jack Antonoff. I'll have to go back and rewatch that footage to see. Then oh, I think like the the making that, of the song. Yes. That's I think thinking. that's if, a deciding factor if it's going right. to be. Like, if it was created on piano or guitar, that means the song can always go back to that. Yeah. That's why, at the very least, if it has to be between guitar and piano for something like Getaway Car, I would say piano. But yeah, I just never considered it in the acoustic realm because of the hype. 
Yeah. Especially yeah. since but like, Rep has those like um like those not weird, but those funky sounds mm-hmm. in the back. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So I don't know. But like also all her like she when she starts to write a song, it's always gonna right. be guitar acoustic piano. or pi- yeah so like she's that's she can always it. make it that you know yeah. so I don't think it would take it out of the running because that's that's how she created it anyway right okay, okay. I, I can get behind that and also maybe getaway car is like one of those set list swappers that would True. be insane can you imagine if it is and then you get it like the first time that's insane Oh my god! I'd go, I'd go wild, probably. Manifesting. It, 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 it swaps out for Cruel Summer. No, absolutely. Why not. would it you to say swap that? Out a rep, a rep song. Rude. Natasha, honestly, like, after tonight, we have to Jesus. reconsider your contract with this podcast. I wish you were glitching again. <laughs> I hope glitch is my surprise song. <laughs> honestly, that's what you deserve at this point. Yeah. I'm, if it is. I, I'm gonna be like she listened to the pod she saw the YouTube <laughs> oh my god okay I hope. so the two songs that I drew for my Tampa night three show aka the show I will also be attending are I think you guys are gonna like this one number one the best day <gasps> yes with the making of my mom's shirt and like the TikTok and oh, everything like I, yeah 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 now I have to manifest that and like I don't think that she will because I do think that she's saving that for the Mother's Day show but like I need to manifest it that would that That would would be so long yeah put it into the universe yeah and then the second song that I chose was Closure from Evermore I think that's a really good surprise song I like that one I like that one is just such a all the sounds oh like a well what did we just say yeah, Natasha, we literally just had a five minute conversation about this. Jesus. I know, I know. It this sounds literally I don't but, really like closure. I was gonna say, but you know what it is when it's from her favorite album, she can be like, uh, evermore. I have to do <laughs> it. How could that song be on there? But when it's our song, forget it. <laughs> Love me. <laughs> All right, everybody. And that about wraps up today's show. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. And please remember to follow us on social media to stay up to date with all things Taylor Swift and the Eras Tour. We are at T Swift Sisters Pod on Instagram, at T Swift Sisters on TikTok and Twitter. We'll see you real soon. This was so fun. Bye. Bye.